We have all seen many iconic movie posters, posters that have an impact on our lives from giving us a sense of nostalgia or just having such a design be a new brand of its own. But the movie poster, like the film industry, has changed and evolved over the last 90 years. In this presentation, I would talk about how movie posters began, the different styles used, and the designers that really influenced the modern movie poster. The very first movie poster was a paper poster created in December 26, 1895 by Marceline Osul for the Lumiere Brothers, The Sprinkled Sprinkler. This would be the very first time a poster was used to advertise a specific film and the first time a movie scene was depicted in the poster. During this time, Thomas Edison was here in America, standardizing the film industry. But not only did he bring motion picture to the public, he also standardized the movie poster as well. He created and set the dimensions for a standard movie poster. It was a one sheet, which was 27 inches wide by 41 inches tall. From there came the three sheet, six sheet, and 24 sheet movie posters. The 24 sheet, was, which was used for billboards. Unlike movie theaters we know today that play multiple movies at one location, back in the 1900s, they only had single screen movie theaters. This meant that only one film was shown at that theater. All advertising done in the movie theater was only for that specific film. They would premiere the movie at that location, then pack up the film with the press kit and send it to another city. This meant many movie posters would get used over and over again, thus causing some wear and tear to the poster. This is when the National Screen Service came in. They made and distributed posters and would print new ones if the original, if the original ones were damaged. They held 90% of poster production in Hollywood, but began to fade due to nationwide releases and multiplex theaters. From there, each studio was responsible for creating its own movie posters. Movie posters were heavily influenced by art movements such as Art Nouveau, Dadaism, Surrealism, and Minimalism. During 1910 to 1920, we see Art Nouveau in its movie posters. It's brightly colored illustrations that were taken from the style of illustration by Edward Penfield, aka the father of the American poster, and William H. Bradley, the highest paid illustrator in the early 20th century. Some posters include movies like Drink Lure, The Streets of New York, and The Butcher Boy. Much of this, these artists is unknown as they were mostly anonymous. In the 1930s, we have the golden age of movies, which posters were heavily influenced by Art Deco, Dadaism, and Surrealism. They had geometric designs, bold colors, and bold typography. During this time, they would often produce two movie posters for one movie. The posters grew more to illustration focused on characters, showing the main characters and a scene from the movie. Some movie posters from, the, from this time include Frankenstein, San Francisco, and The Wizard of Oz. Between the 1940s and the 1960s, movie posters began to take more of a surrealism, minimalism, and abstract expressionism. In 1940s, posters, we rarely see scene depictions and the character, the character illustrations are more prominent, while the typography is a little quiet. By the 1950s, there was more emphasis on typography and subtle clues to the movie in the background. And by the 1960s, type played an important part of the layout while the illustrations served more as a peripheral role adorning the typography. Some movie posters from this time include movies such as Casablanca, Alice in Wonderland, Ben-Hur, and West Side Story. By the 1970s and 1980s, some of their influences would be on Surrealism and Neo-Expressionism. Many movie posters have more of an emphasis on the illustration or the photography. The layout is similar to modern movie posters we see today. This is because the imagery and the typographical elements are more balanced. Some of the most recognizable posters 
from this time include posters from movies like Jaws, Star Wars, E.T., and Back to the Future. In the 1990s to, 2000, to the 2000s, minimalism is what really drives the poster. We see how these posters are keeping up with trends in typography, and we see more photography being used instead of illustration. Minimalism is seen through movie posters such as Forrest Gump and Ghost World. The layout of the poster has mostly stayed the same during this time. However, there were many advances in special effects in movies and in animation, bringing forward some of the biggest box office films like Jurassic Park, Beauty and the Beast, and The Lion King. These films would contribute and lead the way for many movies that we have all seen today. As graphic designers and illustrators working on these posters over the last 90 years all had one problem to solve and this was to create an eye-catching poster that would represent the movie without giving too much away, which is what many graphic designers and il illustrators did. Bill Gold was a graphic designer who worked for the Warner Brothers, creating the 1941 Yankee Doodle Dandy movie poster, but one movie poster in particular that defines Gold's contribution to the modern poster is his Casablanca poster. This poster wasn't this the first the first collage style poster, but the shape placement and the pose of the main characters presents the story without the use of words. He opened his own firm, Bill Gold Advertising, in 1962. Many poster producers and designers would find their start at Gold's agency. There, he produced many posters such as Hair, Clockwork Orange, and Alien, just to name a few. Saul Bass, also a graphic designer, influenced the spread of minimalism, connecting movie design and typography. His poster would often include simple but powerful shapes. He transformed the, visual, the visuals of film advertising. Before Bass, many movie posters depicted scenes from the film and their characters, but Saul Bass created posters that were simplified and showed symbolic designs that visually communicated key elements of the movie. Some of his iconic movie posters include The Shining, Vertigo, Ana Anatomy of a Murder, and Such Good Friends. Drew Struzan was an illustrator and cover designer. He was originally asked to create a figure drawing for the 1978 Star Wars film this poster would be dubbed the circus poster, which simulates a torn poster bill to fit the credit block of the bottom of the page. Struzan created over 150 movie posters. He sharpened his one-sheet style poster and became proficient in the use of the airbrush. This would later define him as a master of the airbrush tool. By the 1980s, Struzan would roughly make 10 posters a year. Some of his more, most notable posters that many of us have seen or grown up with are movies like E.T., Indiana Jones, Temple of Doom, Last Crusade, and Kingdom of Crystal Skull, and Star Wars, the 1990s releases, and the prequels. Movie posters are very important in the film industry. They provide and promise us adventure, laugh, and thrills, but also for strong emotional memories recreate when we go to the movies. It is iconography and typography driven and we can see how over the years there are still those specific posters that bring excitement to our lives.